So Harlow, what do you think about the way that <clears throat> the game uh, developed with the, with Minnesota being able to run the ball late in the game and taking it over? Your thoughts about how that progressed? It, it, it was uh, similar to Rutgers in my mind, how they ran the ball. I mean, we held the 10 points up through three quarters. And then in the fourth quarter, kind of uh, didn't finish like we needed to. We, we've been talking about finish, finish, finish. And uh, we didn't quite finish like we needed to. So we'll just keep talking and harping on it, working on it, and try to get better at it. But that's... That's where the breakdown came in the fourth quarter and didn't finish. I was worried about Caden um, obviously struggled before he went to Sam. Just what you thought about Caden played and then what you thought of Sam and that situation with the court. Right, like I said, and a lot of times I, I hate to just like answer right off the cuff without watching the film because there are things that you miss on film that, that you, you know, with the natural eye. So, um, but uh, I just told some other people in there that you, you can't, Always put it all on the quarterback. Although the quarterback, you know, gets a, you know the brunt of the deal. But when you look at film, oh, that guy was supposed to do this. So that's why he broke down. Right, it's eleven guys on the field. And so for me, this is to come up and say, hey, that was Caden. I mean, you, you got to look at the film mm -hmm. and have a good evaluation. Um, true enough, uh, Sam came in and and moved the ball. Um, obviously, he, he, he used his legs as well as his arm. And, uh, and he did a good job. He did a really good job. And so, and we got our only touchdown uh, uh, when he was in there. So, but we'll continue to evaluate and be fair and, and try to play the best player that gives us an option to win, the best option to win. What's the conversation with on the sideline when you make that decision? Uh, you, ready, you ready to put Sam in? Let's, 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 let's change up and put Sam in the game. Who makes that call, you or is it? Jay? Yes, yes, me. I, I talk with Jay about it and then we, we, we hey, what you think, what you think, let's go. Did you yes. see? Did you see Sam making progress in practice this week after getting some uh, some experience last week? Have you seen him grow throughout the fall? Well, even prior to that, you know, you saw him. He's been working in, as as the backup guy anyway because uh, you know Noah's injury or what have you. So, um, so he's been working. And you see in the progress, he's getting better and better and better, learning everything and and, and doing the way doing things the way Coach Johnson would like for him to do them. So uh, he came in there and did a great job for us today. Why do you think it's been difficult these last few games for the offense just to kind of get into rhythm? Is it something that the defense is doing it, or is it at times just you guys are able to control? That's a good question. Um, you know, I, I think it's a combination of the, the defense, the opponent, and ourselves. You know, a lot of times, you know, I always say to the guys, let all 11 execute, we'll have a chance to win that particular play. And uh, it just takes one guy, believe it or not, to not quite execute and do what he's supposed to do. For a play to be blown up, like, and then you when you watch the film, you know, they're, they're, we could take you onto a film session and show you, like, you you'll be like, oh, yep, if he would have just did that, there it is. So you you have to have all eleven executing at the exact same time on one particular play. When you can do that, you give yourself the chance to really do play well and do well. How disappointing is it to, to get the two turnovers early and only get six points out of it? I'm, I'm guessing as a defensive coach, you looked at, at that as a win if if that was. Reverse get to hold the two field goals. I just how disappointing. Yeah, you, you definitely want to punch the ball in the end zone and in the field position that we had on them. You want you want touchdowns, and so um, that 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 is that is a disappointing thing. But you want to you want you want touchdowns, uh, and we, good job by Jonathan Kilmer going in there and making the field goals and getting us points on the board. I feel like we needed to get points, and and that's what we did. But you know you, you definitely want to be able to get touchdowns when you get in those situations. Walk through the onside kick decision. Is that your call? Is that yes, Ron's yes. Call? What happened? It was my it was my call. It was something that we had practiced and worked on trying to gain that extra possession, trying to just get back in it, you know, and uh, we thought we had it. And it's a good job. It was a good kick. And it was a good job by their guy fielding the kick. Um, but you know, it's execution on their good execution on their part and our part as far as the kick itself. And then uh, they, they made the play. So just trying to make a play and get an extra possession. Yep. Would you do that again? I guess because if you do it, you guys have you keep the momentum from the touchdown drive. If you you know the gamble going into it, so you I'm always gonna... you can do that. You know you can always you, know, you kick it off and then you stop them. Is you know that that's part of coaching. That's part of doing it, trying to make decisions. And so you know, I, if I look back on it, I probably would say no now because I know what happened. But if we got the ball, then hey, great call. So that's that's part of coaching, and um, you know you live with it and, and keep moving forward. I thought of Ethan making his first career start, how he held up there and uh, you know, played the entire first half and a little bit there. Like. 
Ethan Boyd, you said, is that what yeah, you said? Yeah. yeah, yes, yes. Did a great job. He, he has been playing anyway, so he has been playing. They've been on a rotation basis, and uh, he's getting better and better and better. Uh, big man that does a good job. Good feet, good hands, toughness. He does a really good job for us. When it comes to Kane, do you feel like maybe is he getting in his head a little bit? Because mm -hmm. there was a few passes that were kind of airing where he wasn't necessarily under pressure. Who is this? I'm sorry. Kane. Kane, okay. Yeah. Do you think he's is he getting in his head? I mean, I know he's a young quarterback with not a lot of experience, but so now I, that would be that would be me guessing how he feels, and I, I can't do that. But um, you know, he's a competitor. He, he loves to play the game. It's you know, we're we're we're, we're not playing as well as we want to play, and uh, and he wants to play well. You know, and and so and he knows the quarterback gets a lot of heat for things that happen. Um, so. As a, as a quarterback, you know, as any player, but for sure as a quarterback, you got to maintain your confidence, believe in what you believe in, trust your fundamentals and techniques, and uh, and the coaching, and then it all come together. And that's pretty much for everybody, but then for real, for a quarterback, because they're, a, they're under such a big spotlight. Too early to say you would make a call for next week right now, I imagine. Right now, yeah, let's watch the film and let's, let's make a, a sound decision. You shuffled the defensive backfield a little bit, it looked like Malik Spencer was in the nickel area and Gross was back at safety. Was that any particular reason uh, why you wanted to flip that up and how did that look? Yeah, we wanted to get a bigger body at the nickel position and uh, Angelo had been playing safety and so that was, I talked to them personally, him, uh, Mango, Malik, uh, uh, on Sunday, last Sunday after the game. I said, this is what I'm thinking and they were all in for it. They, they, they said, let's do it, coach. And so that was the thought process behind it. Minnesota had a 19 yard touchdown run. It looked like Mangum might have gotten a crack Block? Did you notice that? Is that supposed to be illegal now? Or? I, yeah, yeah. Um, I I didn't see it all the way, so don't let me just comment on that. Something that I didn't really see. But he, I know he got cracked on, I and mean, you can still crack people. You just can't, you know, um, you know, throw your head in there and, and spear them basically. But there 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 are legal cracks that you can do, uh, and we got a crack a place. Um, there was some other things on that play that it shouldn't even have got that far. To be honest with you, but it is what it is. Do you expect Malik Carr to be out for long? Uh, not that long. Not that long. I, you know, he, he has an uh, injury he's trying to deal with, but he'll he'll be back. He'll be back soon. I think it was uh, Simeon Farrow that had his hand got his hand on that field goal uh, early on. Um, you talked a little bit about his decision to come back on your radio show, but what does he just bring to you um, to this team, and what did it mean to get him back? He brings leadership. He brings enthusiasm. He brings toughness. Uh, and he, he's a really good football player. And so he brings all of that to the table for us. And, and he has respect of his teammates. And uh, so they love him. We love him. And and, uh, and and he loves us. And so that that's what he brings. He brings a, a guy that, that, you know, has been here and been through some things with us and, uh, and has played well and done really well. Um, what, does being, more before players. What, what does being on the field for 20 minutes as a defense do to you in the first half? <laughs> for 20 minutes, yeah. It, it, you, well, we did a good job. First of all, we did a good job. And when you can, if you can be on the field for 20 minutes and you hold them to 10 points, that that's pretty good. And we knew that's what their ball control offense. They let the clock tick way down, tick, 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 and then snap the ball. We knew that going in. We told our guys about that. And so that can be deceiving if you look at you know the number of plays is really what you're looking at as opposed to the time because they're gonna let the, the clock count down. To inside of ten, maybe eight, almost every time, and so. Um, but our guys held up. I think they did a really good job again through three quarters, ten points. That's that's a heck of a job, and we found a way to build on that. Does, but does that, does that does that possession time though, when you get late in the games and fourth quarter start to wear on guys? It can, it can, because it's too much time on the field. It can absolutely, and uh, and so that's why we got to, you know, have complimentary football. You know, and the, the offense is also doing their part as well, and special teams and, and as well as the defense. Just wondering about your messaging, Harlan, after just how you address these guys this time. I know you've been in some close calls. And is it getting harder to come up with stuff to say, I guess, or just how to, how to, uh, to reach them? I, I can tell you this. Um, it's, it's, it's not something pre-planned, obviously. And I just start talking, and I, and I just think about it. I'm a natural encourager. That's who I am. And so I'm, I'm always thinking in positive lights. And so. Um, I, I just told them, hey, man, we got one more game, one more home game. Uh, Spartan Stadium, the woodshed, our seniors' last home game. 
you know, against a team that we feel like we should be able to compete against. All right. And so let's send the seniors out, right? That's one thing I said. Another thing I said was it's the month of November. And most times in the month of November, uh, you say November is for contenders, as old saying, right? Now, although we're not contending for a championship, we are contending for Spartan pride. We're contending for Spartan nation. Uh, we're, we're contending for our team, the team that we have in that locker room, just to, to play really well. And so I said, yeah, let's go 4-0 in November. Let's go 4-0 in November. Um, and, and that's the mindset uh, where we are right now. Um, a lot of teams in the history of Michigan State haven't gone 4-0 in November. And so we would have that opportunity to be able to do that. So let's, let's try to take advantage of that opportunity, regardless of who we play. Um, we just got to learn how to finish and, and be disciplined in doing it. I got one more from Matt. Uh, Jordan Hall obviously continues to progress. A couple sacks, uh, forced fumble today. Um, what do you thought from him and Chance being a true freshman going against a pretty talented receiver there, a uh, good portion of the game? They, they, they're they're, they're going to be really good football players here for a long time. Uh, Jordan Hall and, and Chance Rucker. Uh, like you said, two true freshmen that are playing, that's playing a lot of football for us. And uh, really glad they're part of our team. And uh, I just can't, can only imagine how good they'll be next year. Uh, they'll be even better. Uh, after another year in the weight room and eating right and all those type of things, getting stronger and faster. So, uh, yeah, the future is bright for both of those guys. All right, thanks, Coach. Appreciate it. Thank you. Bring a, bring a couple players around the room. Not to say that. Yep.